First off, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. Yes, Castaway Paradise is a lot like Animal Crossing. So often we see people become extraterritorial whenever it comes to a series that they love being represented under another intellectual property. I myself have never been a big fan of the rampant tribalism that permeates nearly every facet of the game industry, but it tends to happen still the same. I don't believe that two games that come from the same genre are destined to cancel each other out or anything like that. I believe the world can have both Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto. It can have both Infamous and Prototype. And it can also have Animal Crossing and Castaway Paradise. Also, this review comes with the standard disclaimer that all my reviews do, that I'm going to focus on the negative of the game, as that's what most likely you are here to see. Even if I absolutely adore a game, I tend to point out the flaws in reviews because odds are that if you're here looking up reviews for a game, you're likely already interested in it and just doing research to see if there are any deal breakers before you pick it up. Back on the comparison to Animal Crossing, let's not forget the fact that you can only play Animal Crossing games on Nintendo platforms. While at the time of this writing, Animal Crossing is not yet released on mobile platforms, that is planned for the future. So while I may be late to the party getting this review done, I'm going to tell you all about one of my favorite Animal Crossing-like games by the name of Castaway Paradise. For those of you who have been living under a proverbial rock, the Animal Crossing games are basically village simulators. The main draw of the game is to move to a village and do your part to contribute to society of the village. You help neighbors, you shop at the local stores, you do your part to keep the village beautiful, and anything else that goes with being a good video game citizen. The first thing you're likely to notice about Castaway Paradise is that no matter what platform you choose to play on, the aesthetic is a little basic even by mobile standards. The characters and models are all incredibly low poly and leave a lot to be desired. But as far as things to actually do in the world, it is head and shoulders above most Animal Crossing games. Not only are there regular activities that you would usually find in an Animal Crossing game, but there is also much, much more. Better or for worse. Castaway Paradise is pretty much everything you'd want from a game of the silk. You can plant trees, harvest fruit, catch bugs, go fishing, decorate your house, donate to the museum, run a farm, and a plethora of other activities. There is a lot to get immersed in with this game. And more than once I've started playing thinking I'll only play for a few minutes and then a few hours later I'm still knee deep in the quests and stories of the local villagers. There are a lot of nice things to say about the game and I highly recommend you give it a shot should you find yourself in need of an Animal Crossing fix. But all is not well in Castaway Paradise. While I painted a rosy picture up to this point, there are definitely some drawbacks to this game. As I mentioned before, the aesthetics are somewhat lacking. Some may actually enjoy the presentation of the game, but I personally find it rather grating on the eyes. I understand that when you release on a mobile platform you have to make certain concessions to make sure that it runs smoothly, but some of the models in the game are so low poly that it looks like something you would have found running on the Super NES FX chip rather than something modern day phones can handle. There just comes a point that things look too rudimentary to be aesthetically pleasing. The looks of the game aside, there are also some problems with how you actually control the game. The touch controls are spotty and the controller support is buggy at best. I'm of course referring to the Steam version whenever I mention controller support though. Speaking of the Steam version, I highly recommend it over the mobile version of the game. While there are VIP options to all platforms, opting into this one-time payment will not prevent ads and special offers from appearing in the game whenever you're playing on mobile. The Steam version will stop showing you these quote special offers once you pony up the cash for the game's premium version. Back on the controls though, controlling the game simply doesn't feel fun in any way. The touch screen on mobile feels inexact and sluggish, and even the mouse and keyboard controls leave something to be desired as the cursor is automatically centered in the screen every time your character moves. Sure, there are a lot of things to do in the world, but when your ability to control your player character really isn't all that intuitive, then the overall fun factor of those activities is diminished considerably. Now one of the reasons that Animal Crossing works so well is because it feels like a living, breathing world. The villagers feel like they could actually exist and you feel like you have actual agency in your town. While there is a degree of this in Castaway Paradise, I'm actually kind of disappointed that there doesn't seem to be anything in the way of weather or time of day. It seems to always be daytime and everyone always seems to have the same schedule, and that schedule being walking around aimlessly hoping that the player character talks to them. Now I want to be completely honest with you and let you know that I have not played Castaway on holidays, so I don't know if there's any special events like there are in Animal Crossing. I have played on a few minor holidays, but didn't notice anything special happening. They do tend to release special furniture and things for you to decorate the world with, but as far as actual events go, I haven't seen any happen yet. Although I do have to admit that there are nice looking seasons in the game, so at least you can expect those types of changes. Now overall the music is catchy, but there's simply not enough of it. Animal Crossing's music was really good because it changed nearly every hour and that kept things fresh enough where you wouldn't have to hear the music over and over again and get sick of it. 
Castaway Paradise, on the other hand, seems to always have the same one or two songs playing throughout all of gameplay, so in all likelihood you'll end up turning the music off after an hour or so. There is also the glaring question that a lot of people have when they first start playing Castaway Paradise is how is player progression handled? When playing a free version, it's obvious that they want you to spend money on gems. Gems tend to affect just about everything you can think of in the way of player progression. From upgrading your farm to upgrading your house, you'll be able to complete quests without actually doing the work if you were willing to use the premium currency. Everything seems to cost gems in the Steam version, but on the mobile versions you'll also have the option of pearls, which is the game's premium currency. Now when playing the Steam version, it really feels like a much better progression system as pearls are not even in the game, so everything relies on your ability to make money via gems. So while that was my main concern when I first started playing the game, in the Steam version that doesn't really seem to be much of a problem. Castaway Paradise has a lot to offer. Hours and hours of carefree fun with resource packs dropped on a fairly regular basis even two years after the game's initial release. It wears its inspiration on its sleeve so those haters who want to dump on it as being an Animal Crossing ripoff just need to relax and crawl back in whatever hole they skittered out of. The developers aren't trying to fool anyone. Castaway is fun but has major control issues. Offers lots of activities but you'll have to endure poor visuals and repetitive music to enjoy them. In a lot of ways, it offers more than Animal Crossing, but in basic controls, charm, and interface design, it does offer less. In a perfect world, Castaway Paradise would polish up the controller support, overhaul the UI, and create some better looking models and then release on the Nintendo Switch. That seems like it would be a match made in heaven. For now though, you can pick up the game on iOS, Android, Mac, and Steam. Just do so knowing that while you're getting a game that may look a lot like Animal Crossing, it is not. Well, and it is. Well, somewhere between those two things is Castaway Paradise.